So hey guys, my name is Matthew Matthew Jose, and on behalf of RC Induction System of the Heart. So main things you want to be aware of the conduction system is that the heart has auto rhythmicity, which means it's basically myogenic, meaning that it's able to generate electrical signals that trigger the cardiac muscle contractions in a periodic manner all by itself without any sort of intervention. Now, the heart contains water rhythmic cells. There's two types. One is known as pacemaker cells and the other one is known as conduction fibers. At the end of the day, they both do the same job, which means they send out electrical activity, which causes the uh, heart to contract, pushing the blood out. The pacemaker cells include cells like SAN, the sinoatrial node, and the um, which have been trickler node, AVN, and the conduction fibers are the uh, bundle branches extending down to the bundle of his and the Purkinje fibers. So, they're all autorhythmic cells, that's the key pro uh, properties of them, and they coordinate and provide a rhythmic heartbeat repeatedly and spontaneously depolarized neurons. One thing that you need to understand is that these um, three different uh, type of autorhythmic cells that the heart has works all by by themselves, so they don't really, they're not dependent on each other. So for example, if a SAN doesn't work, the AVN is still able to generate an electrical activity forcing it down the bundle of branches causing the ventricles to contract. Uh, and same with the um, Purkinje fibers as well. So uh, it's not all bad as soon as the SAN stops working but the thing is with AVN they have a less frequency of uh, electrical activity and the Purkinje fibers are even less so frequency or the contraction of the rate of heartbeat decreases to around 40 when the SAN doesn't work. When it's SAN is working the resting sinus rhythm is around 70 to 80 heartbeat. So sorry that's a bit too much information. So the conduction pathways what we need to know is um, the conduction pathway depolarization spreads throughout the heart, so it starts off at the SAN, which is located in the right atrium, then spreads across, across to the left atrium, down into the ventricles, and why this works is because the cardiac muscle, in if you take a histological piece of a cardiac muscle when you're in the lab, or if you do any other degree apart from medicine or something, when you're doing a, a life science degree, you'll know this because of the histological sections, but when you look at the histology very carefully, you can see that there is intercalated disc, and on the next slide there will be an image. These interlated discs form gap junctions, which means the cardiac electrical activity can trans, uh, transfer itself from one cell to the neighboring cell, allowing the electrical activity to spread throughout the whole cardiac muscle. So on the screen now, you have the diagram of the uh, cardiac muscle cell. And on the screen, you can see where my mouse is pointing to now. This is the... Um, this area here is the intercalated disc, which is shown here. So this is just a zoomed in version. And over here you can see a gap junction, almost like a bridge, which connects the neighboring cells together. And um, it's through these gap junctions, which the actin potential over here, which is initiated by the SA node, then travels through this cell. If there was no gap junction, it would just stop here. But because of the gap junction, it's able to pass through and then spread throughout. So initiation, um, you know that the action potential is initiated at the SA node. The SA node is a small cluster of cells on the right atrial wall, just inferior to the superior vena cova, and it has approximately beats around 70 to 80 beats per minute. So that is the normal resting rate for a normal healthy adult. And during this time, when you know an ECG, when you see a normal rhythm, this is known as sinus rhythm. So here's a diagram published by Pearson Education and um, this one here shows the SA node over here. You have the electrical activity initially spreading out from the SA node, so in, from the right atrium into the left atrium, and then from there they activate the AV bundle, so the AV atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node then passes it down the AV bundle into the bundle branches, and then all the way down into the Purkinje fibers, which causes the heart to contract, upward, contract upwards from the apex of the heart. Now, the action potential travels from the SA node to a AV node, and they travel along internodal pathways. So, the pathway that they travel along is the, known as the internodal pathways. They travel along interarterial pathways as well. So, system of conduction fibers that the internodal pathways are basically a system of conduction fibers that run along the walls of the atria to the AV node. And the uh, interarterial pathway is a system of conduction fibers that run along the walls of the atria to the cardiac muscle all the way down okay so we've established this already in the I just spoke about it a minute ago if you'd like to pause the video and really analyze this carefully um, you could 
So the impulse is conducted to the cells of the AV node, and then they locate, the AV is located in the interatrial septum, whereas the SA node is located in the right wall of the right atrium, just inferior to the superior vena cava. The, there's an AV delay, which most of you would know about from learning from biology from your school days, and the AV delay is because the internodal pathway has a smaller diameter of conduction fibers Okay, so that's the thing that you need to really know. The main point here is where my mouse is pointing is the fact that the internodal pathway has smaller diameter of conduction fibers, so therefore they travel slowly, and this allows for an AV delay. And the AV delay is really important because this allows atria to finish contracting completely before the ventricles depolarize and contract. Otherwise, you will just have a mix up of everything happening together, which can you know can cause um, be, make the heart ineffective. So. The impulse travels from the AV node through to the atrioventricular bundle, and then from the bundle it travels down the atri interatrial pathway down into the bundle of his or the bundle of branches. Now here, this is there isn't a delay between the AV to the Purkinje fibers or the bundle branches because the diameter of the conducting fibers are large, so it allows the signal to pass through the electrical impulse or the action potential. To um, be passed along very quickly, so the depolarization takes place much quicker. So the impulse travels to the right and left bundle branches located in the interventricular septum, and then they pass the depolarization impulse rapidly to the Purkinje fibers. So again, it starts off at the SA node, just an overview over here. And from there, they travel across the um, right atria and into the left atrium, and then they breach the uh, atrioventricular node. This then transports the electrical impulse down the atri inter atrioventricular bundle or bundle of his, is known atrioventricular bundle. Then from there, it goes down the right and left branches. So the right meaning it goes down to the right uh, part of the ventricle and left to the left. Then over here they split into these little branches, which is known as the Purkinje fibers. Okay, so they really you know cover the, all the bottom, so it allows the heart to innervate completely around the muscle, causing a complete full contraction. So the Purkinje fibers are large diameter and they're rapid conduction fibers. So therefore, you know, because of a large diameter, they have rapid conduction fibers and pretty much responsible for approximately simultaneous excitation of the ventricles which is essential for effective, efficient pumping. So the total time elapsed between excitation of SA node and ventricular depolarization is 0.22 seconds. So when if you have an ECG graph in front of you, which I suppose you don't, but if you do know how the ECG works, um, you know the ECG, the SA node or the atrial dep depolarization of the atrium is shown by a P wave and if you measure uh, and this is ventricular deep. So if you measure from the P wave all the way to the QRS, so the R, which is the top representing ventricular depolarization, you should roughly have a time of around uh, 0.22 seconds elapsed between them. So this is the 0.22 or 2.2 millisecond is the time it takes for the electrical activity to get from in the first initially from the SA node all the way down into the uh, bundle of his and then into the Purkinje fibers causing the ventricles to depolarize and contract. So for that video, um, so that's it for that video. The next video is going to be talking about the electrical activity in the heart, so i.e. the different types of uh, polarization, the different types of phases, what happens, and then we'll look into ECG um, and the very basic ECG, what the PQRS complex or the T wave, what these represent and what are the segments representing. So make sure you do, if you've watched the first video, then that you can carry on to the next one. And the third one's going to be about the cardiac cycle. So this whole video is enlisted into one playlist known as the cardiovascular physiology. And make sure you do like our video, subscribe if you've enjoyed the video, and give a thumbs up and share the video with your friends. Thank you.